How was your summer vacation, Stan? It was great. I went to El Salvador and did so much. I did surgery, sutured wounds, gave Lido cane injections, prescribed medication, and delivered babies. Wait, but I thought that you were a college student. Are you a doctor? Of course not. There are no doctors in this area of El Salvador, so I did what I've seen on television. It was a great experience, and I helped so many people. But how could you practice medicine? You don't have a medical license, or even a medical degree. You don't have to be a trained doctor to practice medicine in developing countries. I know how it feels to walk for hours to help a severely injured girl. I know how it feels to drain infections and do vaginal exams. But Stan, you're not a doctor. I'm not technically a doctor. But I'm the only doctor that these villagers had. They are so poor there, and their doctors and nurses are not very well trained. I felt so bad for the people in the villages, and I knew that I had to do something. Stan, how could you say that their doctors and nurses aren't well trained? You're not a doctor, so you don't know anything about their level of skill. If they have a medical degree and a medical license, then they are doctors. You are a 22-year-old college student. You are the one who isn't trained. I am trained. I am going to medical school. When the villagers saw me, they called me doctor. I did so much to help. There were so many children with fevers, and I gave them bottles of Tylenol. The children looked so malnourished, so I gave them vitamins. Some of them had pneumonia, so I gave them some of the expired medicines that my own doctor donated to me. It was such a great learning experience. How do you know that the children had pneumonia? They coughed a lot. I'm glad I had those antibiotics to give to them. They could have just had a cough. Or, they might have needed hospitalization. You don't know how to diagnose someone with pneumonia. You also don't know what antibiotics will work best for a particular infection. Did you see those patients again to see if they got better? No, I only saw these patients once. They didn't come back to me, so they must have gotten better from my treatment. Stan, you don't know that. They could have died from the expired medicines that you gave to them. Or, if they didn't understand how to use the medicine, they could have taken the whole bottle of medicine at once. They could have also died from taking too much Tylenol. You could have made them very sick, or your doctoring could cause their death. Instead of going to a real doctor, you pretended that you were a doctor, and they didn't receive actual exams or diagnosis. They didn't receive medical care. They just thought that they did. I'm sure that I did a great job. I learned so much. At first, I couldn't detect hard murmurs, but after a few days, I heard them with surprising clarity. How did you learn how to detect a heart murmur? Practice makes perfect. I kept listening and listening and figured out what to listen for. You can't learn how to detect a heart murmur without a skilled doctor teaching you and supervising you with every patient. What if you missed heart murmurs or actual heart problems? Those people will think that you are a doctor and believe you when you said that their heart is fine. Also, what did you do with those that you say had a heart murmur? I told the ones with a heart murmur to be careful because they have a heart murmur. First of all, there is no way that you could have been accurately diagnosing heart murmurs. Secondly, if someone actually has a heart murmur, they need to be evaluated by a doctor. They might need treatment. Now that I am home, I want to learn more so that I can help more next time. I'm shadowing a cardiologist, and I have seen about 30 heart surgeries now. I can't do a whole heart surgery yet, but I'm sure that I can open the chest cavity and do parts of a heart surgery now. I'm going to keep shadowing this cardiologist until I'm confident that I can do an entire heart surgery next time I go to El Salvador. Stan, no. You are not a doctor. The cardiologist that you are shadowing here at home has completed years and years of training. You cannot learn how to do a heart surgery by watching surgeries. Just as you are not licensed and trained as a doctor or a surgeon here at home, the same holds true when you go to another country. Those other countries don't have well-trained doctors though. I'm the best doctor available for them. I have to do what I can. I also learn so much. 
stand, those other countries do have well-trained doctors. It is terrible that they think that you are a doctor. You are creating more patient barriers to care. They think that they went to a doctor, so now they will not go to a real doctor. You gave an illusion of medical care and medical treatment, but you are just a student. Okay. Next time, I will tell them that I am not a doctor, but I am there to help. No. You cannot provide any exams, diagnosis, or treatment. You have to respect the local people. Would you want me to do heart surgery on you? Or would you want me to give you a lidocaine injection? No. Only my doctor should do that. Precisely. You are not a doctor, and you should not be practicing medicine in any capacity when you are abroad. If you want to help, then you should support and assist the local doctors in whatever capacity those local doctors ask of you. But there are no local doctors anywhere in the area. Yes, all countries have doctors, and most of them are very well trained and highly skilled. If you are not aware of local doctors, then it means that you have not tried to connect with them. A village located three or five hours away from the closest doctor can be connected with that doctor for an ongoing relationship of medical care. The local doctors are present on a daily basis and throughout the year. The local patients should only be receiving care from their local doctors. Any visitors, whether students or medical professionals, need to work with those local doctors. This educational video has been created by Unite for Sites Global Health University. All of Stan's stories are unfortunate and real examples by college and medical students who practiced beyond their abilities in developing countries. Please share this video with your friends and colleagues to ensure that they understand why it is so essential for visiting students or medical professionals to support and assist the local medical doctors.